Welcome to Slab Podcast, episode 72, where the grades matter. There are no rules. How you doing, Professor Oak? 72. That's a lot. That's a lot of episodes. We are really sticking at this, right? Yeah, it's pretty good, man. It's pretty damn impressive. I'm uh look forward to it every week. Uh it's like uh my sitting down with a doctor, getting to talk talk shop. It's a good time. Appreciate you. We'll be doing we'll be doing the hundredth in early spring ish. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, it's yeah, it'd be early be spring. Too, be too coming long. up quick. Coming up quick. We're also Ooh. coming up to two years. Yeah, two years would be first episode was like January, right? Yeah, right, right out of the gate. Yeah, kicking off the year. Damn. Damn. And we are we are representing. Oh yeah, go Rams, baby. Go Rams. Go Lions. Go Washington. I'm just gonna say Washington. <laughs> yeah, you don't say don't say that. I don't want to get canceled this this quick, this quick into it. Yeah, we gotta wait, save those words for later in the podcast. Cheers, cheers to the season, boys. It's gonna be an awesome one. For you, maybe. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. Um yeah, but I'm doing so good. I'm... I'm doing good. Sorry. I know you I know you asked the I was doing. I'm doing good. How are you doing? I am uh, on top of the world right now. I uh, it's yep. things things are going well. Busy. Um, feel like I'm doing pretty good still. Like buying and selling some stuff. Work is going really good. Lots of things going on there. Kids are doing well. Knock on wood, man. Things are going pretty. We're we're moving in the right directions in the in the game of life. So that's awesome. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Love it. You wanna uh, you wanna jump into last week's spicy comment winners? Run it. I'll do the first one. All right. Well, I'll do the winner. The um the winner, Jake Smith. Yep. Am I looking in the right order? Uh Jake Smith, congrats. You're a rock star. He said with 13, my lucky number, love 13. He said with 13 um, thumbs up, ignore the kids and focus on those collecting goals. Yeah. What do you think? It's so spicy. <laughs> I mean, I agree. I, wa- I want to I wa- I wanna throw hands up, but like, yeah, collect. Do what you love. Enjoy. I, I think there's caveats to it, right? I think the tricky part is um, is there's so much that for me personally, when I think about collecting and the stuff that I want to collect, there's way too many things. It's it's hard to even know, you know, where to start or what to do and what I should spend my money on. There's so many places you could spend money, and you know we've talked about it plenty of times. How many cards just come out each set? You know, yeah. and variations and just doing a binder set, no matter like trying to pay for graded versions of them and stuff. I've really enjoyed seeing people collect their own version of a set, like not necessarily a set, but like their set. So, like for me, I like collecting some of the older and newer Pikachus. And um, I've seen some people collecting like old, old tarts, or some people collecting um, a specific like style of artwork or you know the i i love when i love when people like have something that they enjoy and focus on that which i think symbolizes quite well the the comment you know it's it it, it ignore everyone just collect on what you want to do and in, in your goals i think now's a good a good time to do it um you know better than it has been the past couple of years for most stuff but educate yourself with it yeah, I was take, I was taking this comment a little more literally, like I actually ignore my kids and start collecting more. F the family, let's roll. Oh, I thought you meant it was like the kids are in like the kids in the hobby. I didn't even I to the actual my kids. Yeah, I, I, I think that's what he was getting at because last <laughs> week I was talking. I feel like oh, it was gosh. in re, re, yeah, like retaliating to what I said. So, um, yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, I completely agree. F them kids. So. Collect, 
<laughs> collect on, dude. Collect on. No. Um, again, oh, shout out to oh, the Spicy God. Boys TV podcast. Uh, link down below in the description. Again, Jake Smith, appreciate the comment, dude. Um, this is so fun, aren't they? I, uh, so fun. I watched both of the last two episodes I missed. They upload a lot. Um, so I watched both of them, listened to both of them today while I was working. Um, it was like a 50 minute one, and then the other one was like two hours or something. The one they did it while I was streaming Sunday, so uh, it's always good banter back and forth, funny, cool listening to other collectors. There's not a lot of us in the space, so I like yep. hearing, I like hearing their, their takes on some different things, saying different things. So it's uh, it's been really good, thoroughly enjoy it. But I do plan on keeping collecting, but I'm not going to be ignoring the kids. You got to integrate the kids into the collecting, make their collection goals, your collection goals. So it's everyone's happy. That's, that's the play for sure. My daughter's got, I, I would definitely relate to that. My, my daughter's now got a couple of empty ETBs in a tin and like, she's just, you know, piling stuff in there. She'll come in here and she'll get, I don't know if you can see it on here. I've got a bunch of like bulk sorted, just like thousands of cards, just like in piles and stuff everywhere. Yeah. And she'll come through and she'll just find one she likes and then go go out in there and it's it's nice. She and she's been drawing she drew Pikachu for me the other day, you know, from a from a I guess there's like videos on YouTube. I don't know if your kids do this. You you guys at home, I don't know if you've looked this up, but it's called a directed drawing. I, I'd never heard of it before, but I guess it's someone that like just teaches you how to draw something and um you just pause it like they show you step by step it's for like little kids to do it and so she's been doing some pokemon ones there's like people that just teach you how to draw pokemon and she just follows the line pauses it follows the line pauses it you know that kind of stuff and uh it's, it's really good they come out really good because it's step by step you're not just trying yeah. to do the whole thing actually it works works quite well it's quite impressive you know for such a young kid so try that at home you guys got the uh the teeth brushing tip now you get the drawing tip yeah, that's much better quality YouTube than some of that crap I've seen out there. It's fun too. Yeah, the people that do it have a, they have a lot of personality. Yeah, integrate them with it. But I did not take that comment that way. Or I I was thinking it was like ignore everyone, Everybody. like just just focus on yourself kind of thing. But yeah, that's funny. I, I well, like it, it is a little spicy, I would say, if taken yeah. in the literal sense. Much, much more so. I'm glad I went first because that 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 made the conversation much more interesting. Yeah, the uh, we're gonna get to the next one, the honorable mention. But I gotta mention, if you could please drop a spicy comment. The most upvoted spicy comment person is gonna get a hat. I think we've given away a couple. Uh, Shug Nasty, Thrifty. I know Brandon Baker's got one because he won a Pokemon or he got a second place and then he traded for it. So a few of these are out in the wild now. I don't remember who else. I feel like somebody else won one. Um, you got one. So drop up, drop a uh, spicy comment, get it upvoted, and you could win a hat. So definitely do that. And we're going to probably do it live. So that'll be cool. That'll be Ooh. cool next week. A spoiler. Uh, so the honorable mention goes to you. You were one like behind Jake Smith. Figured we'd talk about it because it uh, it's kind of dark. It's kind of dark. You had said, don't hold anything worth money right now. Got a cell phone. Am I selling this? What are we doing? What are you talking about? I'll give you a clue. You have a few of them at auction that are worth money and have been at auction. I think for, for me, I, I, I'll just give context on it, and I want to hear your response. I sold stuff last. I sold a bunch of stuff last year. You know, we talked about it. I sold a bunch of my Pikachu's. Um, I saw the value incrementally drop in every week. It felt like every month the the data was trending in the no, wrong direction for buying and building the collection. It was going the wrong way. And I've since looked at the prices of a lot of them. I'm planning on actually making a video about it. That's probably going to be my next video. I've got, I think, 17 different video ideas listed out of different ones I want to make. I think that's probably the, the first one on the list that I really want to attack. I want to look at 
because that's so personal to me. That was like such a big decision, and that's still something that I'm that I'm tracking and like is still in my head. But there's a lot of the Pikachu's that I sold. I'm not talking like illustrators. I'm not talking crazy ones, but I'm talking ones that have gone down a, a fair bit. You know, into down into double digits. Some of them. And I'm really glad that that I that I sold them at that point. It worked out well because I can buy them back cheaper now. Some of them have gone up, and we'll touch on that, you know, in, in the video. It is interesting um, which ones. No spoilers, but there's uh, there's definitely. It feels from what I've seen, it feels like there's uh, a big disparity between the vintage and the modern, and then everything in between is much more non-correlated but i guess like it's surprisingly i thought everyone i don't know i want to give too many spoilers but yeah i i just don't think still even now i i think it's still trending a little bit that way with stuff that is really worth money i'm not seeing things spike as such and mm. um i've sold collection pieces and you sold collection pieces now so I know you agree with me because you've done it to some extent, but I want to hear about it. Um, well, sealed product, I don't think you should instantly sell. That's worth some money. I have that. I'm not selling that. But uh, at volume, depends what it is. Depends what it is. Yeah, at volume. Yeah, if you're if you're sitting on one or two, I mean. Might as well hold it. I don't know. It's not. Is it worth selling for a hundred for thirty dollar profit, forty dollar profit? Uh yeah. So I yeah. We're gonna get into it a little bit more, but I have been selling a, a decent amount, um, because I am not financially free. I have things. I still have a mortgage. Have one car note. Um, student loans for the wife. So there is things to pay off until i had what's it, i don't even know what it's called not financially free but financial independence or whatever i don't even know um basically where i do not have any loans would be the goal i think it's it's doable before 40 um at the rate i'm going it'll be nice i don't plan on moving before then i think uh i think that's totally possible that's seven years away for me um so that would be phenomenal to be have everything paid off by the age of 40 would be nuts it'd be nuts it'd be unreal yeah that'd be unheard of for people i know a lot of people i know like that's just that'd be cool i'm hoping so i'm doing this now selling a bunch of this stuff just to um get a jump start on it i'm not selling everything obviously i mentioned this last week uh i went into it probably a little bit deeper last week but I do think it's it's not a bad idea. Like if you got stuff out there, everyone's got some type of bills going on. So um, just take a take a look at the mirror. It, it'll probably most of the stuff you have will probably be there. Most of the cards I'm selling, outside of maybe the black labels, the one of ones. Um, there's a few one of ones selling through Fanatics. I don't know if I'll be getting some of those back, but if I wanted to, most of them will be there. And if it keeps trending the way it has, they'll be cheaper for the most of them. So um, we'll see though. Who knows? Exact exact same mindset of what I'm thinking, honestly. Like I, I genuinely I genuinely agree. Yeah, I want to be in a, a better place. And yep. yeah, I could possibly buy things faster in the matter of a few years than I did in the last four years. So yeah, yeah. I'd be in a better spot. I, I think you you've you've got a, a purpose and a motivation for it right there's there's reasons you're doing it it's not you're not just willy-nilly or you know getting out of the hobby or whatever that kind of stuff yeah. Yeah. same for me like some of the some of the stuff felt pretty overvalued some of the stuff i felt like i paid too much for it too you know a little bit so i, I wanted to, to downshift it before you know before the revs went up but um yeah. i i also think uh you know i had a uh another baby incoming at that point you know I, that the, the the second kid was on the way so i think there's some motivation for me on like you were saying trying to get things straight and cleared up and it wasn't big money nothing too crazy but um just feeling a little bit more organized and clear on that side of stuff um knowing that 
I'm not I haven't just wasted money on things when I know I could buy it back cheaper in the future. Yeah. And um I've actually set up my eBay alerts to start looking at some of the ones that I sold to start buying them back. Uh, you know, just to start getting a bit more action on on bids, playing around, seeing where we're at. Um, I, I'm probably going to track some of those too for that video and see see what pans out or not. But hell yeah, yeah. I think it's a good uh, good topic. I'd be I'd be curious if any of you guys want to leave a comment and let us know if you sold anything right now because you you're worried about maybe it dropping modern stuff. I think vintage is a lot of vintage has already been dropped in the past couple of years, somewhat. But it, is any of you been selling or buying modern stuff? I'm intri- I'm intrigued on that. Um, you got a spicy comment for next week? I do. Uh, not Pokemon related. Uh, but I tell you what, dude. Every time I go to the, like we call them party stores here in Michigan. When you're we call, do you know what a party store is? Like not, they they just pop up at Halloween those ones. No, party store for us is a liquor store basically. So you go in there. Oh, yeah, I thought you them, meant we call them party stores because uh, that's where the party's at. You get all the alcohol. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. So every every time I go into one of those, I'm buying high noons. High noons are the best adult, like just casual drinking beverage in existence. Oh, I have a comment on that. All right, I'm you're up. Like, you're up. like that. Um, I got one that is that is very Pokemon related, and I'm gonna say the Pokemon collecting part of the hobby is is becoming elitist. Yep, hundred <laughs> percent. Drop your spicy comments. Drop your upvotes down below. Get those in so you when can you- win the hat. That would be awesome. I want as many of these out there as possible. Oh, what's the, oh, you guys see that? Oh. I got that boy tucked head. away in the corner. I don't want it to get dust on it. I feel like it's getting dusty. I'm going to try and keep it looking good. No, it looks yeah. good. Um, okay. You want to talk real quick on... You want me to go through the numbers for grading? Let's do it. But on here. So um, we've seen, I feel like pretty much every month there's been inclines, right? It's It's been growing. It's been getting better for most of yeah. them. Um, I think it's a little surprising. I don't, I, I don't think I expected. There was a lot of hype, right? When, when we're in the, the boom, everybody calls it. I think we were expecting things to, probably decline or level out a little bit but it seems from what i've seen from the numbers we've been tracking this a while it's still going up people are still grading more every month every year that kind of stuff it just feels like it's growing psa specifically is kind of ridiculous i mean in in august total items graded um 1.4 million units like that's just unreal to me. Like we're almost at a million and a half in four weeks. It's that's insane. That's a uh, absolute monster effing ton of plastic going out there in the world. It's like the, almost four hundred thousand a week. The consumption is just insane. Like for this to like be year month over month. For four years, like it's crazy. At least three years, because they're a shut down for a year, or yeah, basically three years of just pumping out massive freaking numbers, dude. It's just insane to me the amount that gets consumed, and we're still here. Like you know, it's wild, wild. Right, right now this month, would you say it's there's probably a bit of hype around the football season starting? Oh yeah, that's the best. Hence the the judges football cards, yeah. Yeah, I, I I think it could play into it. Um, I know that's not one of the – I think baseball and basketball and Pokemon were the three top-graded ones, right? Like, I don't think football was even in the top three, but there has to be a bump. Like, there has to be a boost when when the season yeah. starts. 
Yeah, I don't know if the new prism. I forget. I don't follow it close enough to know if the new prism dropped. I feel like it did earlier in the year. Yeah. Well, um, we're looking. Stick it. Well, let's stick with PSA and just talk about the non-sport and TCG side of stuff. So they did. Um, they did 1.4 million total. They did 580 thousand of it was TCG non-sport, which is a big jump last i mean it's saying it's 24 percent jump from last month um but three percent year on year so for me that's that's telling me like right now obviously special whatever it is like something's going on tc non-sport people are sending more in than in august but in reality like year on year isn't that high because the year on year for the total was 13 percent, and only three percent of that was tcg yeah so Essentially, it seems like people are just going crazy for sports cards in PSA slabs. Like it's just continuing to go up and up and up and up and, and grade more and more and more. Yeah, it's gone up 230,000 roughly cards since June for PSA. 1.16 million to 1.39 now. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's awesome. That is awesome. So CDC, um, total items graded 171,000 for the month, which is still, you know, absolutely killer. Um, and then TCG was 150 of it. Yeah, pr pretty much, you know, other than 20 grand in some of the sports, which is all combined in there now, you know, with the changes. Yeah. Pretty, pretty dominant, you know, on, on the, on the TCG side of stuff and non-sport and Beckett, Mm, it's much more sports. So back at sixty five thousand um, overall, we're twenty eight thousand TCG. SGC is basically all sports, and one sixty six thousand there, um, and then only seven thousand of it is is TCG non sport. And I'm thinking even that hmm. is probably like Star Wars and like some of the other random stuff that they do. I don't even know how much of that is even Pokemon, honestly. That's um, nuts. I think the total here is 1.8 million graded cards. I think in Q1 next year, if we're tracking like this, it'll be 2 mil. I think, be, I, think, I think that total, 2 million total graded in one month. Because we're at 1.8 million. In oh, one for month, all of them. All, all of them combined, yep. yep. I see. All of them combined, that's 1.8 million. So I think if looking at June's and then looking at August, if you project it out a little bit, end of the year Q1, we could be hitting 2 million in a month, which is... 100,000 a day, people are grading. 100, like when you when you look at it, talk about, we're talking about business days, obviously, but that's yeah. a hell of a lot of cards. That's awesome. I'm this, here for this, it. I'm here for it. Yeah, I mean it. I mean, it just goes to show, like collecting really is. It's not just a silly thing, you know. Like some small little hobby that people do, you know, in the basement or whatever. This is a worldwide, very active. I mean, you think not just of the amount of units, but how much some of those cards are worth. The, the amount of grading fees and shipping fees and just in general, the amount of revenue and the impact that's having on the economy. Yeah. I mean, just insane. I, I can't even fathom like how much how much of a positive impact that's having. Spent in America. Um, so yeah, good, interesting one. I think yeah. um uh, yeah. The one thing I, other thing I noted, trip. June had 1.78, or sorry, 178,000. And in August, it's basically the same. And in June, they were doing the, the everyone was talking, they were doing more mega mystery slabs. It was pretty slow turnarounds then. I don't know Did what it is. It? Yeah, I don't know what it is now, but I feel like they're not doing those. I thought turnarounds were much better right now people getting stuff in less than 10 days so for bulk 
So they're they're definitely keeping up their numbers, um, which is good. Hundred and they're also cheaper. Like I just did a submission, eight dollars and eighty cents a card with the premium membership. So it's pretty mm. freaking cheap. It's cheap. I still like my PC cards in CGC slabs for pristine tens, baby. Yeah, I'm glad I picked some up. I actually really like them. They do look, they do look pretty cool. Oh yeah, big they time. Do. Big time. I like it. It's incredibly contrasting with PSA. <laughs> when you look next to them side by side, it's such a stark difference. You wouldn't even think it's the same industry with how different yeah. they are. Yep, for sure. Yeah, it's uh. So when are you sending out your next submission? I got. You can't see it. I got a whole pile up there. I need. I need to get them out. I got. I got random stuff though. I've got like. Pokemon, um, I have Marvel, I have Pokemon, I have One Piece, um, I think I have Muppets, <laughs> some old Muppets cards from like the 60s, 70s, nice. whatever it was. I have I have some pretty random stuff in there that I want to send out, just fun stuff, some couple of things that you know might I might sell one day, but in general, just just things I've been wanting to get graded when again slab. I'm curious what they would grade at. I think I have a lot of curiosity in grading, uh, you know, and uh, things that look really clean. I want a little bit of reassurance. Like, is this, is this the time that I think it is? And then, yeah. yeah, it's nice to get them back and see if they are or not. That kind of stuff. If you got a submission, you're building up. If you, you said you just sent some CEC though, right? Yeah, I just sent, I don't know, 40 cards to CDC. Um, I'm not sending Yu-Gi-Oh! to PSA anymore. Holy shit, I'm done with that, to be honest. Um, it's so dark. <laughs> it's so freaking, it's the darkest shit I've ever seen in my life. Um, so, yeah, I, I hate grading Yu-Gi-Oh! I guess, gen, in general. I ra- it's so cheap, just might as well just buy the freaking 10. Um yeah. But yeah, there was a bunch of other stuff. Some of the cards Beerski had sent me finally got those out, and some of the other stuff I had cracked out of PSA nine slabs. I was just gonna try it there. Um, but yeah, nothing else. I just sent a couple cards with a PSA submission of my friend's cards. He had a bunch of freaking awesome cards, uh, really nice cards. So vintage. Cool. Uh no, it's primarily modern, but generally pretty expensive cards. Like mm. everything graded in a ten is gonna be. Hundred dollars plus, easy. So, oh, nice. he had the Magic Cart, Paldia Evolve, Queen, um, the new couple of Greninjas in there getting graded. The new ones, those are like four or five hundred dollars. Like, I can't believe how well they're doing. Yeah, it's phenomenal to see the mod. Like modern people don't believe me when I tell them like modern, like you can, you can grade modern Pokemon cards. Like I could go buy it raw for whatever two hundred dollars and grade it, sell it for four hundred. Like they're like, what, what? Yeah. They're selling for more than my first car. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That, I sold that's, a car for two hundred bucks once. Yeah, yeah. That's very hard to to wrap your head around that that this this is even happening. But again, with that many being graded, there's clearly so much demand out there. There's so many people in this. It's, just, which, yeah. Yeah. it's reassuring for sure. It's something about catching those Pokemon in those freaking slabs, man. People, people get excited over it. and we just saw recently i think it was in your in their uh discord pika drew at he's a teacher at school he had seen kids playing with their cgc 8.5 showing them off oh yeah seeing graded cards in the wild is some it's so weird to me sometimes like i it's so weird like we had matt quinn on this channel so i go into these into these card shops they're like sell, they're like have you ever heard of cgc talk to me i'm like no man, tell me about it. Like <laughs> it's <laughs> just to just to shoot the shit with them a little bit, but it's like yeah, it's 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 funny how uh how things play out. It's it's awesome. I love it. I was I was actually doing um uh yeah, I was doing a uh assignment in in my degree. Obviously, we know we know we're both doing degrees right now. And um, the company that it was about was one of our biggest worldwide customers. 
and it was like talking about stuff that was kind of directly related to like what I, you know m- what my company does for that customer and i was like this feels so weird <laughs> like like you say because it's like out in the like out in the public yeah. you know, like out in the wild or whatever kind of thing and i was like i know so much about this like you have no idea like, yeah this the stuff the actual details i know about this company and and the the context behind what, what we're talking about right now it's such a such a weird feeling but yeah i didn't i mean i didn't mention it I just kind of got on with the work just just did the assignment kind of thing the, the little project but it's it is funny like in there and see him i saw someone list i think you mentioned someone do it a little while back but i saw one of my friends list that they were selling pokemon cards uh you know a, a, a few weeks ago and um scam the shit out of them no i should i should have but there were so many people commenting and talking i was like i don't like i'm too like introvert if there's like other stuff other people talking other things going on like i'll just let them take care of it like i'm i don't want to try to assert myself into things so i was just yeah i was just looking at the pictures i was like yeah some pretty cool stuff all you know modern like you say from the past few years but like really cool stuff hmm that's cool. Pretty nice stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It is. It's nice knowing, like, with I think it's part of what drew me in very early. Um, you know, back in early COVID times, like we talked about, us getting back into the hobby and stuff. I think part of it was knowing I'm not the only one. Like this is, oh my god, this isn't just me anymore. Holding on to my binder from when I was a kid. Like I thought I was just the weirdo that still had these worthless pieces of card with pictures on that I freaking loved and I was still holding on to them, you know, from, from my childhood. And, no, it's a pretty big thing. Like I'm not the only one. There's definitely a, a whole lot of people out there doing it. So it's pretty cool. It's like almost comforting knowing other people enjoy it and, and are doing the same thing and interested in it. Yeah. That's cool. I don't, I don't know what's the right word for it. Is it comforting? I don't know. Good enough. Good enough. It's good. <clears throat> so, um, I had sold a bunch of cards uh, this past Sunday. Shout out to ZNG Emporium. Not sponsored, um, but he was a consignment service I used and sold through uh, eBay. Sold a bunch of cards. Sold a bunch of cards. There was, I guess, not too much PC inside of that auction. There was a few Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Those were the closest thing to PC inside of that um those sold pretty well one of them got absolutely crapped on uh shout out to my needleworm card that sold for like 300 dollars. um but besides that it was a pretty healthy auction um one of the biggest ones was a tag 10 charizard card base set unlimited um that ended up selling for a whopping price of four thousand dollars I have messages back and forth with probably James or somebody. I was like, I'd be happy with two grand, to be honest. Like, I'd be, I'd be over the moon with two grand. And it pretty quickly uh, got over that price uh, as we approached Sunday evening, which is nuts. So it was confirmed paid. Like, while I was live streaming, because I streamed it, and somebody had relisted it on eBay after they purchased the freaking card. No way. <laughs> You didn't hear about that? No, I didn't catch that part. No way. <laughs> I just, I, uh, we were this talking one, about the selling and stuff. I didn't. I didn't this, catch you saying this, that someone relisted it. This was uh, maybe depends on what Discord, but it was pretty big news. So the guy, the guy bought it. He relisted it before paying for it on eBay. So my josh old card shop of course had me scared he's like oh the dude just bought it to see if he can make a quick flip before he pays for it blah 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 yeah i'm like that feels really bad but it, yeah, i could so- see somebody doing it um so i'm like that's not good but and then james i guess the next day sent invoice or whatever just followed up he received payment and then he sold the card on ebay for seven thousand dollars a day after I saw Okay, it. I got confused. I thought the seven was was the record, that snapshot, I thought that was the record of your sale that someone had pulled and was talking about it. Okay. No, he I, flipped yeah, I it. Got me, I got lost in the mix. Assuming that was a real sale, it was a best offer accepted, so it wasn't an auction. 
I wouldn't understand why it would be a fake sale. Um, but yeah, dude made three grand without even touching a card in 24 hours. So quick. Massive effing brain on that individual. Everyone thought he was dusted to the sky because he bought a tag 10 Charizard. Little did we know he would almost double his money before even touching the freaking card. Um, well done, was it, sir. Was it Dan? Hats off to you. No, Dan, Dan's not that intelligent. Chill out. Um, yeah, no, that so, was... so, ha- so let's let's stick on this for a second. Are you now thinking you should have done buy it now? I did. So I originally listed it on my own eBay for like two and a half weeks at 10 grand, like the same listing price. So I wasn't with offer. Yeah. With, with offer. Um, I think I got one inquiry. The dude wanted to offer me a magic carp from base set. I don't know. Like he didn't want, yeah, literally wanted like free. So I was like, all right, F it zero inquiries. So I was like, I'm just going to send to auction. So yeah, I, I guess it helped auctioning it built up a lot of hype for it it had a f ton of views a metric f ton of views because Pretty it was being awkward yeah. um i'm also a massive shill on instagram so that that helps <laughs> james helps shilling it on instagram but uh yeah stuff like that it's it's interesting like seeing another cgc 10 it's like ah, uh, who gives an f but seeing a tag 10, it being the first one, if people want to sit on the comments and roast it. And so it, it helped promote it to other people. So a lot of people saw it and it was, it was a perfect storm being the first one. First to market's always sexy, obviously. It's a one of one, up. right? It's yeah. a pop, it's a pop one. Like it, it really is the only, it's very unique. And, and I think that plays into it more than what the card really is. Like the, yeah. there is a uniqueness that really does add. A novelty factor that is really cool like owning the first of something for sure yep so that was awesome it was an awesome auction worked out i i'm not disappointed because like i said it was a cgc9 massive yep. come up from what was i guess a 700 dollars card in a cgc9 slab to to four awesome. grand but i could have 10x to in seven thousand dollars if I would have just consigned it through catch them all collectibles on uh fanatics. <laughs> do you, th- do you think you'll, well, it his, well, you say that I just would maybe said that to kick him in the nuts, but maybe that guy had a buyer. Maybe he'd been talking to someone in China that said, I need to source me a card. This is the price I want to pay. And that guy's only checking. I don't know, whatever. Like who knows uh, that the, there could be more to it. Do you think you'll miss it? The card. No, Good. still have my Charizard. Three years. That's all I need. Because then it, there's no but if feelings, right? Like you can't feel that way. If <laughs> if you missed it, that would be something personal that you could hold on to and, and feel bad about. But f- for me, like you did well, you did great. Yeah, I wouldn't mind getting a tag nine because I still have the stack of base set tag nines. To get a complete tag nine set, I need like three cards. I need the Charizard Venusaur because those both upgraded tens, and I think the Blastoise because I think that downgraded to an eight five. So I think I need. Of course, it's the top three. Yeah, of course, it's the big three. But yeah, that would be cool. That would look cool. Even the Ven. So just to give perspective, those of you that don't know the comps, uh, CDC ten. Of the same Charizard last sold for three grand on Z and G's auctions, and then the week prior it was like two point six. So it it is like two x twenty five percent, thirty percent higher than the last CDC sale. PSA is still absolutely stupid at ten grand for a PSA ten. Um, but yeah, I, I felt I felt really strong. You getting uh, two two grand? I was like. Oh yeah, he'll like for sure get that. And it, it ten anything, I feel like it would get that. Just with the idea of a possible regrade, you know, even if someone's playing that, that felt easy. But I wasn't sure how high. Yeah. Yep. So I feel okay. like I have a really good like when it's something that happens, like when a lot of people come to you and say, Hey, I want to sell you a collection. Okay, what do you value at? They give you some dumbass freaking number. 
Yeah. Uh, it's usually like max plus 15% or something stupid. And when I went into this, like I kind of outlined all my cards, what I thought they'd sell for. And it was pretty effing spot on for what I thought I was going to get. I did something similar with my Zapdos cards that are ending on Fanatics on Sunday, which I'll be live streaming. Check it out. Um, while watching the Lions play the Rams, Jesus Christ, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a freaking riot. I can't wait. Uh, but I went through and I priced them out, and I think I did it pretty competitive. Like I feel like, uh, and I'll be interested to see like if I pump myself up or I'll be really curious in putting the different numbers next to the ones, my estimations and stuff to see where they actually land. But I feel like a lot of people can't do that very well. No. Yeah. No, it is very difficult. I think you just have to generally be looking and tracking stuff and just have it kind yeah, of like help a bit walk the every week for sure. Yeah. <laughs> natural. You're kind of naturalized to it just because the, 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 the nature of it. Um, so you say you feel like you were you were pretty on there. What percentage range were you off? Were you like within twenty percent, within fifty percent? Like how close would you say you were estimate wise? I was shooting for around twelve, thirteen grand for Total. the stuff on eBay. Yep. I think the final, if everything's paid, was either it was like sixteen. Oh wow! Around there, that's because way of the, the Charizard. I literally had it down for two grand. Um, in some of the other cards, the Yu-Gi-Oh card, the Morphing Jar sold for seventeen hundred. I had that marked a little bit lower too. There was some good sales inside of that. Um, yeah, the Charizard was the biggest bogey though. That's what Shout out Z and G. Yeah, no, it was pretty good. It was good, and it's rate above a hundred dollars you can't it's 88 percent for things i don't want to quote everything but it's yeah it the minimum the most i'm paying is a 12 percent fee there's a couple cards i think that went below 100 i think literally two maybe so those get a little bit higher fee which blows what five bucks but yeah it's negligible when you when you sell at that volume and those kind of stuff on you know the collective total so seeing the tag grading 10 sell for four grand plays are open are you are you uh full sending what do I you think something something nice something special like it seems like people are watching them right like they look they're looking and they're buying that someone paid hard cash for that yeah I, that it does leave me feeling more optimistic about the grading companies just in general, not even just tag. Like it does feel, leave me feeling more optimistic that people have got their eyes on other stuff, not just searching PSA, but searching for specific grades. Cause it's obviously it was cause it was 10, but because of what it was at we, combined with the grade. There are uh, something to a, it, right? There's a couple of first edition Charizard sales and tag slabs. I know Z did one and it sold, I think it was a tag eight or a seven. I think it was a seven and it sold for basically the same exact price as a CGC seven. So as a company, literally one of the first ever first edition Charizards graded to get and match a CGC grade and price. That's just a kick in the freaking nuts to CGC, to be honest, for a brand new company to be co competing with you like that. Um, doesn't feel great probably to them, but yeah, no, it's, I wouldn't be grading random shit. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be grading stuff that isn't super popular, things that aren't Charizard. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's, did you rip them yet? I haven't done anything. I've been so busy. Yeah. No, um, I'm behind. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting. I'm looking, I'm looking out for different options for sure. It'll be cool. Do you do you think tag is gonna do well? I think they're off to a freaking good good start. Um, I literally found out about them I, basically a little over a year ago for the first time at the national twenty twenty three, which is August of twenty three. 
Um, so they've come a long way in a year. They got a lot of backing from a lot of people with a lot of money. A lot. So, yeah, it's similar to the – it's like it's like PSA in the sense that all the people that have the Charizard PSA 10s, you start setting floor prices for things. Um, and if enough people start doing that for tag, um, they'll be doing pretty it's, good. Like It sticks in brains, yeah. Yeah. So it, I think it'll be – it's one of the nicest slabs for sure. I, I've cracked it. I cracked one card out of a tag slab. I've cracked hundreds of CDC slabs. I've damaged maybe one. I've cracked one tag slab. Damaged the shit out of that card. I I don't know. I need to do it again. I have a couple of junk ones to do, but I don't know what I, I I don't know. I'm one for I'm o for one on tag slabs. Uh, not to shill them to the absolute brains like I, but I have, but I'm, I'm grateful. <laughs> you, I've had success, yep. so, and I think there's more success to be had, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it rain. So, just like I did CGC, CGC had a lot of good plays when they came out. Yeah, you've done so much with CGC. I feel like you've just, yeah, I feel like the volume you've done there, buying, selling, grading. You know, all of the above. Um, Cracking, yep. Subgrades and just manipulating those to be. Yeah. I've it, seen so many videos of you doing like CDC, you know, work. It's, I'm, I'm very curious what some of your next videos are going to be if you're going to do some tag ones. Yep. Tag, tag is the new CDC, baby. Let's go. New video series coming to you. That, that should have been your spicy <laughs> comment. Uh, nah, I gotta save the good ones for uh, not spicy comments. <laughs> yeah, it'll be good. It'll good be good. Um, prototype test prints. We've talked about it at least twice. We had Sean Bassig on. We had a whole other episode before that where we had just first seen them and they had first come to to light. Crazy. Now there's it's changed a little bit. The dynamic. There is a lot of hate towards these. Mm -hmm. um people saying they're not real majority of people for where people are um going back and forth what are your thoughts on these cards and i'm really curious um i i i think i probably meet in the middle with 95 percent of people where it's probably real, but like could be fake. Like I, I don't, I don't know if at this moment I have a really strong feeling about any of it. I just think they're really cool and amazing. Like the idea to me of what they are is like kind of mind blowing. Like the idea of owning one of those and what it symbolizes and what it, what it truly was. You know, if they're real. I mean that's incredible, right? We're talking about the inception of Pokemon cards. That's that's insane. Yeah, it's literally crazy. That's that should be the holy grail for any Pokemon card collector, like from back in the day. I mean, and probably some even now that are just getting into it. Like, who wouldn't want? The ten, the first ten Charizard tag Charizard. Who wouldn't want the first PSA ten? Who wouldn't want the first autographed this? Who wouldn't want the first ever made test print of this? It's just like something about it that just feels crazy um, and amazing. But I, I don't know if it's real. I don't know if it's fake. I just think it's super cool. I don't know. Yeah. I am. I find it hard to believe. More so, like I obviously we had the discussion with Sean and he had shown the cards and had he mentioned that he got to meet Akabane and stuff. But so there, I don't know. I didn't see photos or videos or whatever. But it uh, CGC putting their literal neck on the line to grade these cards, offering a certified guarantee company the cgc company you're offering a guarantee 
on these cards and the prices and what they are, what you're encapsulating is real and authentic, you are risking it all to grade these cards. If if they're fake, like if like if you don't know, like and you're grading these, what the f are we doing? Are you like that is terrifying that a yeah. company would consider even doing that? You would think there'd be some checks and balances. Matt gets the cards. Matt Quinn gets the cards, and he's like, "Hey, here's all the data. I doubt it's just him saying, yeah, we're good. Let's do it. It's got it. There's got to be checks and balances. If it's a, it's a freaking company. It's not just well, John did, Smith. Didn't we? In the basement. I feel like we watched a video about them grading them. Didn't they make a video about it? And it was talking about how they used um, a specific type of imaging." for it to like look into them and then they checked with like people from back in the day there was certain people that they reached out and checked to i feel like they made a video about it that i watched i don't know i, I don't remember to be honest but i mean surely it wouldn't have just great yeah i mean it's yeah we'll say it's this with something of that level of craziness knowing they got everyone's eyes and questions are gonna be on it yeah, I think it would be it would be nice if some of this stuff could go to light and there could be videos released showing the origin. That'd be phenomenal. But maybe that it it I I just believe it would exist behind doors. I feel like maybe they have that, and it's just not publicly shared. I have no reason to not believe them. It there probably is, should be some of that. That's probably a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is, should be more probably than what there is, but. I got to give it to the professionals. I consider it a professional. It's a freaking pr pretty freaking reliable company. CGC, the comic books, they've been doing it. Line. They, they lost their ass when people were cracking freaking comic book and magazine slabs. And they offered the guarantee on all that. Like they're here for the collector and will probably stand by their stuff. So. That yep. would be crippling if this if something were to come out. I don't think they would risk their entire company on these freaking cards, even though they're sweet. Okay, so let's tr let's change the tone on that a little bit. Would this have still happened right now? Would this still be the same feelings? Would this still be the same doubt and questions if PSA were to do it? No, I don't I think don't so think either. So. And I don't think they release reports and stuff like they graded recently they started grading new stuff um damn what the i forget what it was but yeah they've graded a bunch of stuff too um recently that they didn't before i'm drawing a blank but i feel like i didn't see a report or anything like the authentication process or what it was there was some tops on cards they weren't grading for a while yeah. Um, the no rarity Raichu, I think, was another one of them. It has an error or something, they wouldn't grade it forever. Uh, maybe there is a report from PSA on it, but I feel like I don't know. Um, yeah, so I don't know, but yeah, it's they're they're definitely held on a, on a pedestal, obviously, because the number of people invested with PSA. So I would do the same if I had tons and tons of money inside of PSA. The yeah. I just hope they're real, like you. I'm as as the guy standby looking outside in. Freaking awesome! I'm off. Awesome. It's so cool to see this stuff. It makes sense that there's pristine tens because odds are a lot of these were duplicates. Um, I'm sure these are there's play test versions that were play tested with. Odds are some of those found the way into the trash more than likely. Like, hey, we're done with these. Scrap. We're gonna print more. We don't need these. Who gives an F, you know, like, <sighs> so it would be cool to have like play tested copies that were like show old wear and stuff. That's, that stuff's freaking awesome. Like uh, that's what I picture like old vintage prize Yu-Gi-Oh cards that those get played in decks. So getting like damaged crush cards, shown and jump cards, you don't know what that is, but it's a card you get from winning in like a tournament, but it costs like thousands of dollars. People would put it in the deck because it's so good. And it would literally get damaged because people were playing with it. So getting one of those copies would be way cooler to me, knowing it was 
used in playtesting, um, stuff like that. That would be sweet. But oh, no. Magic, I didn't hear nobody bitching, nobody about the Magic the Gathering Gamma prototypes that CGC graded. Zero bitching. Mm, I, I also, is that because not... it's in America? They're American made, easier to find the story. Mm, yeah, I think it probably is. Yeah. yeah, I think there probably is an element to that. The, the, and I think we talked about that back when we when we first talked about it. I think the the Japanese element is probably very challenging, you know, yeah. and especially with some of the artists and some of the people involved not being super like into the limelight and not being um yeah very responsive and stuff that side of stuff I, it must have been challenging for cgc um in that side but the whole thing just in general i think the whole story of it is just interesting whether they're real fake whatever like it's still cool um yeah hmm spicy one yeah, no, it's I love it. I just saw the Zapdos Pristine Ten playtest card sold for eighteen thousand dollars through uh, Alt. Um, glad I got out of that game when I did, cause damn, that shit is steep. Those the Disco Hollows, all that cool shit. I would love to. I want some early version of one of these cards. It would be cool. It would be cool. And knowing if I did buy it, I have a CGC financial guarantee. I'm I'm chilling. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. chilling. I, I looked at, um, I Long saw, <laughs> I was looking at a post the other day and I saw that the first sprites, like the first pictures that were being drawn to like design it were in 1990. Um, and they were showing like, uh, I think Pikachu was it Pikachu? Um, There's a couple of them. Gengar was one of the first few, and it looked pretty weird. Like it didn't look good. Like the first iteration was not great. Um, I forget what the other ones were. I looked it up after, and I was looking at them. So go investigate, guys, if you if you're interested. But um, yeah, it's crazy to think that it's been 34 years since like the st first started actually talking about it and and uh and playing around with the idea of this stuff yeah crazy man crazy so you ready Damn. in honor of the nfl season beginning today of the, the day of the upload 8 30 p.m eastern standard time damn it's a late game um i cannot freaking wait though my wife is gonna be so pissed she don't even know it's coming um <laughs> I got a American football trivia for Mr. Professor Oak himself. You have two lifelines, a third. How, if many, you want to how many questions? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. There's five questions. Okay. If you get all of them right, I'll throw in a vintage Yu Gi Oh pack to go with a the hat. They're going to be multiple choice for as many as I can give you. Okay. One second. All right, so we're going to do NFL trivia, who wants to be a millionaire style. I'm going to give you three <laughs> lifelines. Three lifelines. You need to get five questions correct. Oh, God. If you get all five correct, you can't leave at any time like the millionaire people. Get all five correct. The additional prize with this will be a vintage Yu-Gi-Oh pack. A lot of people won't give an F but it's probably going to be at least minimum value of $30. So at least there's something you could sell on eBay. I'm going to win. Five questions, three lifelines, literally almost a lifeline, a freaking question. Each one's multiple choice is easy as this can get. So your three lifelines, I, go ahead. I think you're about to say it. It's 50-50. 50-50. So I'll, I'll cut out two of the answers. Phone a friend, and I'll switch the question. So if you get to a question where you're like, F, I I don't know, give me a new one. Okay. And again, only five questions, all multiple choice. Only. 
It's easy as that. All right. All right. Big All right. Money. Big money. Da -da 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 it's not going to be easy. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess I don't know if it's going to be easy. <laughs> Probably starting off. All right, I'll start off with an easy one. Last year's Super Bowl champion. Options are the Steelers from Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. the Bills from Buffalo, the Chiefs from Kansas City, or the Eagles from Philadelphia. I think I actually know this one. I don't want to sound like a dumbass if it's wrong, though. I think it was the Chiefs. Ding, ding, ding. One of five, you have correct. I, next time, I'm going to ask you final answer, though. I'm so I, proud of myself. That I got so you got right. four questions left and three lifelines, so this is, you're, you're on easy street. So, the Super Bowl champion two years ago, not last year, two years ago, you have the Ravens from Baltimore, the Eagles from Philadelphia, the Washington Commanders, the Chiefs from Kansas City. I thought it was the Bucks. That must have been the year before when Tom Brady went it with the Bucks. I thought that was last year. Oh my God. It is not the Bucks. I will confirm that it is not the Bucks. Give, give me the options again, please. You, I, I know you said um, the Ravens, Philly Eagles was one. The Ravens, Ravens, Eagles, Washington, Chiefs. You have phone a friend, 50-50. Switch the question. And three more questions to go. I'm going to... I'm going to use switch the question, please. Final answer. Final answer? All right. So you need to now name three NFL teams with bird logos. Oh, There's, my five. God. There's five. No multiple choice. You just need a name then. Do I need to say like the state or area? Or whatever too. No, okay. So Ravens and Eagles. I know I know those. I already knew those. And let me talk it through in my head. I'm trying to look think of the logos and if they have a bird in them or not. Um <laughs> not the lines. There's I a lot of put a timer on this. Damn it. There's a lot of I will try and be quick. There's there's a lot of animals that i'm seeing but not birds um you said which ones i said the ravens and eagles okay and i think there is oh man this is tough do, 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 do. Boop. Do, 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 do. <laughs> you have another lifeline. You have 50, 50, oh, 50, 50 Ks, but you got phone a friend if you're. Seems like a waste, but you got phone a friend. That's a really difficult one. Um. I'm trying to think of each state. There's so many states. Damn it. There's a lot of states, but there's five bird teams, and you got two of them. Five. Five of 32. We are not trimming any of this time. They're going to sit is, there and just listen to the silence. Is the Blue Jays one? Is that baseball? Final answer? No, yes. I guess not. You would have said yeah. Jesus. Did I blow it up? You blew it, dude. What the fuck? No. Oh, uh, no. That was it's... such a difficult one. 
you had phone a friend left. Um, Eagles, Falcons, Seahawks, Ravens, Cardinals are the five. Cardinals is the one I was picturing in my head. And for some, uh, for some reason, I was questioning it because I thought that was a baseball team, was the Cardinals. And I was like, I'm, I was fighting with myself. The Toronto Blue Jays are a baseball team. Yeah. Okay, so can we do a runner-up price if I get four? Yeah. All righty. Next question. If you switch, you're one of two. Let me just put that. I'll forget. Did the Super Bowl questions. Super Bowl number question mark. This year. This year, the Super Bowl number will be 58, 62, 55, or 66. Got phone a friend. Or 50-50. I'm going to phone a friend. All right. He's phone a friend. Do I have to ask for permission? Uh, No. We don't do that around here. Hey, how's it going? Can you hear? Yeah, I can hear him. He sounds good. Hey, Daniel. Um, You can't hear. Let me talk to him. Can can you hear me, Dan? No, we can't. Okay, never mind. You're you're in my iPod. Um, Dan, Mr. Catchmore Collectibles, can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine, yep. Oh, my God. So, Josh, the green shears wants to know what year wait what was the question is it for 2024 or or the one in january the super bowl that's gonna happen this year or next year what super bowl number is it okay what the question is what is the next super bowl number 58 62 is it what is the next like which one is it is it 58 62 55 or 66 55 or 66. I was thinking 55. And you can 50 it's 50. Higher than that. Um, damn. You could I use 50 guess... 50. This is where I... would, 60 would be LX. I'm trying to think. What were the options? 58, 62. It's not 66. I don't think that's too high. I want to say it's 58 or 62. She would run with 62. I feel like that's a fun one. I would lean 62. This is so fun. Thank you <laughs> for, help, for, for yeah. saving my butt and being my phone a friend. Hopefully it's right. We'll, we'll find out in a minute. <laughs> is, that your, is that your final answer or do you want to use your 50-50? He said, is that, is that final answer or should we use the 50-50 while we're on the call? Oh no! You, um, you have I'm like I'm a coin flip between fifty eight and sixty two, but sometimes fifty fifty will leave you those two. Well, and he heard you say that. So. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he could have us on that. <laughs> yeah, if he, I don't know if he randomizes that or if he no, uh, it's man, not. manually picks them. <laughs> He's definitely picking it. He's kicking my ass with this right now. I'm, I'm trying to think because like. I can't remember the number. My favorite Super Bowl was the one where the Giants beat the Patriots. I know that was in Yikes. 08. That was freshman year of college. 08 was 16 years ago. Would that have been to six, 16 years ago? 46. If, it's 62. if it was 62 now, that would have been 46. Or was that 42? 42 feels more right. When was the 50th anniversary? 50th anniversary would have been a big thing. I feel like we just was had a, 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 like a, ago? yeah, I just feel like we just had a decade one. And that's why I want to say, I want to say 62, but. I'm a, college was a long time ago. <laughs> if it was 62, that would have been 46. 42 feels more right. Super Bowl 42 feels more right for the David Tyree catch for the Giants beating the Patriots. So now I'm I'm feeling 
<laughs> I'm, I'm coin I'm coin flip still, but the coin's flipping towards 58 now. Just just based off, I want to say Super Bowl 42 was the David Tyree catch. Okay, I trust you. Would you like these 50 50? You you know you know way more than me, so let's uh, let's run with that. Um, right. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Good luck. Good luck. I hope that's right. I'm Good. gonna Google it right when we're uh, off this, so I, I I I will know soon if I screwed you or not. You you'll have to <laughs> you'll have to tune in as well. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, whenever this goes. <laughs> All right. All right. So, thanks, thanks man. man. See you, Dan. Yeah. Have a good night. Bye. You too. I love Dan. All right. He's so awesome. The Super Bowl. Wait, I didn't say the answer. What is your final answer? I thought you said it. What did he say? Was it 48? I don't remember. He said 56 or 62 was the two that we got, right? There is no 62. It's 58. Oh, yeah. 58, 58. 58 or 62. He said 58. So I'm going to run with 58. So the Super Bowl this coming February is L V, which is it's fifty eight. You're right. <laughs> you got it right. He got it right. <laughs> yeah, you did, right. you did right. Yeah. Thank so you, yeah, the, the L is fifty. The and then it's V three, which is eight. So L V three. Shout out to yeah, Dan. I I don't remember the 50th one. Yeah. They just had a 100th anniversary of something, of the Super Bowls or something. So, Oh, maybe um, that's what I was thinking. Dan, the going back to the David Tyree is – that was pretty crazy to be able to do that. I, was, I don't think – if I was asking the question, I don't think I would have got there. I would have went back to the one that was in Detroit, which was 42 maybe. That would have been my guess. It was Super Bowl 42. And maybe I would have got there with that, but I don't know if that was mm. Super Bowl 42. So he's brilliant. You got two of three. You have two more questions left. All you have left is your 50 50. Um, so here we go. This one, it don't get easier. Sorry. Oh, thank you. You, you might have you might have to roll, you might have to roll the dice a little bit. Uh, this is so we're going into a football season starting okay. today. Uh, which season? Which season is it? Is it number 89? Is it number 95? Is it number 105? Or is it number 110? There's numbered seasons? I didn't even know that was a thing. Well, first season, the second the football's been around how many of these years? Each one of these seasons is a year. 89 years, 95 years, 105, or 110? I'm going to need 50-50. On that one, one hundred five or ninety five. What year is it? Twenty twenty four. That would bring us to nineteen thirty. There's no way it's older than nineteen thirty. Surely, if you get this one, the next you said ni- ninety five or one hundred five. Yeah, 95 or 105. If you get this, the next question I think is the easiest question besides the birds one, which you whiffed on massively. But no offense. I'm going to go 95. Final answer? Yes. Wrong. One hundred five. We just, we just. I was saying it, and I didn't real. I when I was saying it, I realized I was going into this question. I was going to say, yeah, we just had the hundredth anniversary, which would have gave you fifty fifty. I think I did mention it briefly. Um. Oh. <laughs> uh, we did. We just. They just celebrated a hundred years, which is. <sighs> they had it all over their football fields, big gold letters and stuff. Um. Yeah, one hundred five. One hundred five. All right, you got to hit me with the last one just for the fun of it. Now, how many games are in a regular season? Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, or eighteen? 
16. No. 17. Stay in school, kids. It is 17 as of like two years ago. It was 16 for a long effing time. So uh, I was just, right. It just changed to 17 two years ago. So it's been it's 17. 16. It was 16. My entire existence, it was 16. You're not wrong, but it changed two years ago. <laughs> uh, as a consolation prize, I will still be giving out a first edition Legacy of Darkness pack. For you so 2003 it would have been an invasion of chaos pack we absolutely suck so <laughs> this is a out of 20 30 bucks so i'm so Stop, sorry i'm so that sorry was, winner that was dark that was then the birds one really the eagles i should have that's the one you said it's like seahawks was, isn't cardinals st louis still baseball Swear no, I watched the baseball there, game and it was there cool. is there is the St. Louis Cardinal. There is, uh, I believe. Uh, but the uh Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, I didn't realize game. I didn't realize they use the same birds across multiple sports. You ever heard of the state called Georgia? It's right next yeah. to Florida. It's like yeah, it's right, 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 right there. there. Been there a few uh, times. The Atlanta Falcons. It's like right there. Next time, next time, next season, catch us on uh, this episode of uh, I don't effing know. So that's basically what it was. You didn't really. I'm getting you next time. I'm I'm definitely doing trivia for you next time. All right. That will be fun. That was good. That was good. I'm sorry that I screwed it all up, guys. Dan came in. That was huge. I can't believe. I thought you guys were locked in 62. And I'm like, damn, that's dark. He got. He was doing phone of freaking friend and he got the same amount of questions right that I did. Yeah, he did. He, <laughs> he he had one chance. He got one question right, and you got the last year's Super Bowl champion right. <laughs> Let so me know how right. you guys did down below. Did you did anybody else get all six of these questions? There were six questions in total with the switch question. I would imagine most people probably got probably got most of them. Yeah. I think the first one, I, I I actually knew that one. Like for sure, knew that one. That that one was pretty easy for me personally. But the others, yeah, definitely more challenging. Yeah, the Chiefs are going for a three peat this season. So back to back Super Bowl champs. I think it yeah. maybe has been done once. I can't even remember. But very cool. It would, be, it would have to be the Patriots if it was anyone, surely. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I think we should wrap with some financial advice. Makes sense. We're both uh, do finances ourselves. <laughs> uh, we yeah. are not financial advisors, but financial advice from elderly men <laughs> who have kids and families and collect nerdy stuff. What is the worst investment you can make as a person? Does that obviously not hobby related? Doesn't have to be hobby related. I didn't think of it that way when I wrote this. Give spit us some wisdom. Like what it, what should we avoid as human beings on this planet of Earth if we want to be successful? Is there is there an age range for for that? Like what would you tell your younger self basically? Okay, that changed it a lot. <clears throat> I think um the worst investment if I was going to teach myself at a young age would be um, buying anything that is something you feel like you should have, not what you need to have. So you should have the brand or you should have the um, this to keep up with the Joneses, that kind of stuff. Literally don't worry about a single one of those things. Um, for me, invest invest in yourself and invest in other people. And that's time and money. You know, both go fairly hand in hand. Um, and also don't be afraid to pay people to do things for you. Because one thing I've realized is if you can get really good at making money, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're good at spending money um, or saving money. But what you can do is you can pay someone less 
to do jobs or tasks or responsibilities that you don't want to do. And with that time, you can make more money. It's a net profit in, in that sense. So um, I would definitely focus on, yeah, focus on yourself, on, on building knowledge, skills, expertise, uh, getting ready for your future. Don't worry about buying anything to impress anyone, do anything. You know, my, my first cars were pretty cheap bangers. Not, not too worried about that kind of stuff. And then, um, yeah, don't be afraid to spend money on, on other people. Generosity. What about you? Uh, yeah, so you kind of touched on pretty much a little bit of everything there. But my single biggest one for like me, 20, 21-year-old self, um, if I could go back in time and tell me not to do something, it would be don't buy that new car at the age of whatever, 21. Um, yep. I, I bought a Ford Focus at the age of 21, brand new. 2013 was the model year. Uh, car payment was like 278 a month, not too bad, but I was making 14 bucks an hour. I, my parents, I had I, at 21, I already was out of the house. I owned my own house at the age of 20, so I was a, I was like a year in some change outside of the house. So my parents didn't come with me when I went to go buy a car, so they didn't really have a the influence to tell me no. Um, but yeah, it's since then it's been used car city essentially has been kind of the play. So they lose so much value rolling right off the freaking lot. You could go buy a one year lease, just save freaking 20% even if you like, that's almost the new car, at least do that. Um, of course, if you're working at an automotive OEM and you get a plan, you can get 0% interest rate. There's, there's going to could be a play, but most 99% of us, you should not be buying a new car. Um, none of us probably should, unless you're, it's like you're buying it for your business and it's all tax write off and you, it's all worked in. But in general, that, that is, or definitely don't lease a car. Do not, like, that's another massive one. Do not, like, that is like, the kiss of death. I don't, there's only a couple scenarios where that could make sense for somebody. And that is just massive. How is that? I've never understood how that is even a thing. It's just a friggin' scam is all it is. Never heard of it. till I came to America and I was like, what? Like you rent yeah. your car. Very odd to me. Yeah. yeah. When, when you buy new cars now, they're putting these things out. Six year loan, seven year loan, like insane. Oh, yeah. How long these are getting. Lamborghinis, you can get a 30 year loan on a Lamborghini now. People are doing that. People are doing like 30 year Lamborghini loans. It's don't, insane. Don't don't tell me that. That's dangerous. Go out on top. Go out on top. Um I don't know, I don't know if I'd fit in one. I fit in a Ferrari. Which? Which model? With a helmet. 488. Oh, yeah, you race. Yeah, okay. Well, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Okay. Pokemon Wonder said he didn't fit in a Lambo, I think is what he said. Because he did like the same racing experience I did. I never tried sitting in a Lambo. His head was probably like this. It was cocked, just fit inside. That would yeah. be great. But you also got to remember him saying that. Yeah, I think I remember him saying that now. Um, yeah, so that's my biggest thing of advice um what now outside of that so that's the worst investment what is the best financial advice like you kind of did that um in general mm. but i was gonna try and like worst investment and then what would be your best advice like you should do this definitely do this um i think for me would be really focus on investing in yourself early on to make a good wage to build a career specialize get really good and move up really fast like get really good at something and specialize in something um that would be my my personal one and in something small where you can make money because i think what i did and i think a lot of people did 
was went into what they loved and they were passionate about and they wanted to do. So for me, I went to culinary school. I wanted to be I wanted to be a chef. You know, I wanted to cook food. That was where my passion was. I started culinary school when I was eleven. Like it was my whole childhood wow. from eleven onwards. You know, going into teenage years was revolved around me cooking. Like that was the most fun thing in the world to me. I started culinary school when I was sixteen. You know, graduated after a year and then went on to do. I'm not going to go into all the details, but went on to do very well. You know, in in the in the um, in the food realm um, w- within the world, but I didn't make any money at it. Like, there's no money there. Like, it's fun. It was passionate. Like, I I, I learned incredible life skills. Like, trust me. Like, there's there's a lot I took on, but the. I had to get out of it. Like I'm, I'm not in that field anymore. I had to get out of it just because I knew I needed to build a career where I could make like actual, like real money, um, really good money. Um, and I'm talking about in Europe, like in in America, you can definitely make money in in kitchens and as a chef and stuff. But as a chef in in as a head chef in England, less than minimum wage in America, like it was te- is terrible, you know, and and and. Uh, yeah, that was rough. So I think I would say invest in yourself in, and be really smart about setting yourself up as quickly as possible to make good money. Not Don't worry about investing in Bitcoin or invest in this or a house or any of that kind of stuff because that stuff is like slow incremental growth. Whereas if you make really good money, you can make bigger jumps and in, in increases and that's sustainable for the rest of your life. You can always yeah. make good money once you, once you've done that. And I'm just now getting to that spot. You know, in my early thirties, just reached that spot where I've got my channel like narrowed down, making good money, and I've built a career. Um, you know, fifteen years later than I wanted to. Um, but well, I don't want to downplay it because a lot of my life skills and things I've been through are why. I'm, I'm at where I'm at right now, kind of thing. Um, yeah. And what I've learned in my degrees and stuff. But what about you? Good answers. That was good. That was very good. Um, I like the way you went with. Uh, it it makes sense to invest in yourself. Like I just a little bit more on that. Like I always thought it was good to have really good interview experience. Um, getting as many interviews as you can, even if you're employed, to keep keep up with the market. So just a little bit more on that side of it um financial advice to give my younger self and to other people it would be try and invest a little bit more into future retirements um when mm. i was buying like example when i was buying this new that's focus, a good one when i was buying this focus i was doing probably the 10 percent to my 401k um i didn't know what a roth was until probably six years ago eight years ago um so and that was like 25 so the first few years i had no clue what a roth was um so i was just doing 401k which but it was i literally jumped into it at 21 10 percent taken away from my 14 dollar an hour wage <laughs> um and it wasn't that big of an impact then because 14 dollars an hour it's not huge um but that's stuck with me. I haven't really increased it since then. I probably should. It stayed at 10%. It like my, my salary has gone up and up. So I am contributing more and more and more every year. So it's, it's compounding. Um, but I wish I would have did. And I would like to next year is kind of my plan. If I get a raise that percentage raise, I want to put it into the 401. Um, just, I want to get it up to 15%. And, that would be cool. So just do it as soon as you can. Cause I'm telling you this stuff, it is it multiplies. I look at the beginning of year, end of year, every year, and it is just, it's awesome. It's, it's the compound interest on this stuff. If you're inside of the right stuff, it is, it doesn't meet some of the Pokemon stuff I do, but it's, it's nice seeing just raw numbers instead of stacks of cardboard in my closet. It's, it's cool. Just, I could click a button and it, I mean, being a 401k, it's difficult to just flip it. You can't just flip it because you're going to get wrecked on 
fees and stuff, but it's cool just seeing a dollar value there instead of like I said, yeah. a bunch of cardboard in my closet sometimes. I think I think that's very real in the getting the early aspect of it too. Like you say to your younger self, such and you said there the the word multiplier. I mean, what a difference it makes starting early. Like such a crazy difference. I mean, we can yeah. stream it from the rooftops obviously all day, but um yeah, I mean that really does it really does make a big impact getting in there early and seeing that that growth for yeah first first few years is, is probably doesn't feel like much but when it gets to the point where you know yeah. 30 40 years in or whatever oof yeah what a difference that was a good one that was a really good one oh yeah man awesome ready to wrap let's wrap it everyone don't forget your spicy comments don't forget to thumbs up on the ones that you like that you see in the comment section. Don't forget that we have a prize next week. A couple of prizes going out. And we'll probably we'll probably do it live. We'll probably try and go live next week. So do watch out. Yeah. Watch out for that. Um, and hit the like button too. Don't forget to share with your friends. Don't forget to share on Instagram. Send it to your mom your auntie your cousin um share a qr code link in the podcast to everyone at work just everything just get the word out there go check out spicy boys tv link down below in the description 10 out of 10 do a call out and thanks dan peace bye guys